I believe we're live on Facebook. So for those of you who are joining us on Facebook, we'll go ahead and give it a couple more minutes before we get started. Um, so just sit tight for right now. Just a reminder for those of you who are joining us live on Facebook, if you're interested in joining in the Zoom call itself, there is a link that you can click on the Facebook post and that will allow you to jump in and to ask questions and um, interact with our friends from Runge in a, uh, in a different way than just kind of posting questions to the Facebook group. So please click that link and it'll join you into the Zoom call. Otherwise we'll get started in about 30 seconds. All right, so at this time, we'll go ahead and just get started a little bit early because I see some people are joining us. Um, so again, just thank you to um, Sam and all of his uh, coworkers at Runge for leading a, a, a beginner kayaking class in very, very cold, windy weather. Um, so I'll turn it over to you guys. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you all so much for joining us. And on behalf of the Missouri Department of Conservation, I wanna thank you for showing up again to our outdoor skills series. So my name is Sam Stewart. If you've seen some of the other stuff we've done, we've talked in the past about archery, we've done some creek exploration, and today we're gonna to get out on the lake and do some kayaking. But as always, I'm not alone. I've got some helpers here with me today. Probably remember Athera from last time when we were on the creek. Hi everyone. Got a new helper here. This is Emily. She's gonna be helping us out today. And of course, as always on the camera, we've got Carly helping us out. So they are going to do some filming, do some paddling, and help me out today learning about how to kayak. Now, just like we've done in the past, as we start today, we're going to talk about the different gear that you need to get started kayaking and how to be safe on the water. And then we're not going to waste any time because, like as Brandon said, it's a little bit chilly today. So we're going to hop on the water and show you how to actually get out there and do it. So to start, we're going to talk about some of the gear that you need. You probably noticed that you've got a hat on, protect yourself from the sun. I've got some longer sleeves on because it's a little bit cooler today, not wearing a lot of cotton because it doesn't dry very easily. So there's some different things that you can wear. I've got my water shoes on, my old tennis shoes, always wear those closed toed shoes when I'm out on the water, helps me keep getting rocks in there and all of the things like that. So some of the other gear that we may need, of course, if we're gonna go kayaking, probably guessed it, we're gonna need a kayak. So if you look right over here, right behind Emily, We've got three kayaks right here. These are our large run sit on top kayaks. They're really stable and we'll talk a little bit more about them here in just a moment. Down there also, you can probably notice that we've got some kayak paddles. We're gonna need those. A little bit different than a canoe paddle. It has blades on both sides and we'll talk to you a little bit more about the kayak paddles when we get down there to the boats. But if we bring it right back here to our table for now, we can take a look at some of the other gear that you might bring with you when you're going kayaking. So just like before, something I always suggest bringing with you are some sunglasses, help protect your eyes from the sun. If you don't have long sleeves, um, if you don't have a hat, if you have any exposed skin, always make sure you're bringing sunscreen. Don't need a lot of sunscreen today, it's pretty cloudy, but make sure that if you have a sunny day that you're bringing sunscreen so that you can protect yourself from the sun. Also, I always bring a towel with me. Make sure we can dry off not only things on the boat, but dry off myself, get warm if we need to. 
Always bring our water with us. Make sure that we have plenty of hydration when we're on the water, when we're paddling and we're sweating, we're losing, we're losing that water and we wanna make sure we're replenishing that. Now that's a lot of the same stuff that we brought for our creek crawl. But one thing that we're gonna to add today that we always like to bring with this on the kayak, something that I like to bring with me, is something called a dry bag. Now this is really handy because if you have a wallet, if you have keys, if you have a cell phone and you don't put them in something dry, they're gonna get wet. I promise you that the water will claim those objects if you don't make sure that they're in a dry bag, don't make sure that they can stay dry. So dry bags, really inexpensive, super easy to use. I put all the things that I wanna keep dry inside my dry bag. That includes my water bottle, like I said, my keys, my phone, my wallet, that kind of thing. Put it all in there, you press the air out, we fold the top down, usually about three folds, we'll get it done. Just like that, and we latch the top. Pretty simple. So that's some of the different gear that we want to bring with us. Now you can bring other th things with you as well. If you have a snack or something that you want to bring out on the water, your lunch with you. In other words, if you want to keep it dry, put it in your dry bag, that's going to be great. The nice thing about it is too, if you leave a little bit of air in there, a lot of times these will float if they do come off your boat, but hopefully they won't because one of our rules is to always make sure everything is tied down. So we want to attach everything in our boats. So now that we've talked a little bit about gear, let's talk a little bit about safety. Something I haven't mentioned yet that I am wearing that you probably noticed is a life jacket. If you look at some of our helpers, they're also wearing their life jackets. This is my number one, this is my first and last rule. Anytime you're in the water, you can see the lake behind me. Anytime we're in the water, we always wear a life jacket. It will save your life. So we put on our life jackets already today. We wanted to show you a little bit about how to put them on though. These are zipper fronted life jackets. We loosened up the side straps, we zipped the front, then we started to tighten our straps down. Tighten the sides, tighten the diagonal straps, and very least to secure ourselves in, we tighten down the shoulders. Really important when you're wearing your life jacket to test it on yourself before you get into the water. If it slips right up and over your head, it's too loose. That's what'll happen when you fall into the water, it'll slip off of you. And that's what we don't want. Whenever we test our life jackets, we pull straight up on them. You notice how mine is staying in place. It's not coming off of me. So that's gonna be just fine. If we were to need our life jackets, if we were to fall in the water and we needed them to save us, they would. So make sure that your life jacket is really snug. So snug that it won't come off when you lift on it like this. Always wear your life jacket. That's our first and last safety rule. Also for safety, we wanna make sure that we check the weather and the wind. Today, we used up all of our warm days, but we've got a little bit cooler day, but we have very little wind and we have no storms. So even though it's cloudy, we don't have very much wind on the water and we don't have any stormy weather. Never get into the water if there is a storm. If you hear thunder, if you see lightning, get off the water, really important. So those are a couple of other safety things that we can do. Make sure that just like we did when we were walking in the creek, make sure you take dry breaks on the water when you're paddling as well. If you get wet, make sure you take time to get out of the water, dry off, get inside the vehicle, warm up before you go back out and start paddling again, because we want to make sure we avoid something called hypothermia where our body temperature starts to drop, all right? So only paddle where you're comfortable. That's another one of my suggestions. The first time you go kayaking, you don't need to get on white water, right? You're a beginner. You want to start in somewhere that's really easy. Maybe start in a small pond, all right? Here, we're starting off in a lake. All of us have paddled before. I'm an experienced paddler. Emily has paddling experience. And Etheria is our beginning paddler, but she has some paddling experience as well. So we come out to the lake where we have a shallow area, very little wind. It's gonna be a safe place to learn some of the different strokes, learn a little bit more about paddling the kayak and not have to worry so much about being in a dangerous situation. So paddle to your skill level. Make sure that you only paddle where you're comfortable. The last thing is make sure that you have an experienced paddling buddy. So with me today here is Emily. She has plenty of paddling experience. She's gonna be my experienced paddling buddy today. And then we have our beginner, Athera here that's gonna be learning with us just as you're learning at home on how to do the different paddling. So without further ado, we're gonna get some boats in the water. The first thing that we're gonna do is show you the different parts of the boat, show you a little bit about the paddles, and then we're gonna show you how to get into your boat. So follow me on down to the kayaks. Really important. Number one rule when you're in your kayak, 
not only to wear your life jacket, but make sure that you attach everything that you don't want to lose. So if you don't want to lose it, make sure that you attach it somewhere on your kayak. So right here, we have some bungee cords. We're gonna go ahead and attach our dry bag. Remember that has our stuff in it. That's our sunscreen and our towel and everything else that we wanna bring with us. Make sure that you attach that, all right? So we have three different kayaks here and we've got a few different parts of the kayak. Both sides right here are called the gunnels. We've got the bow in the front, the stern in the back. And then of course we have our paddle with two blades on it. Kayak paddles are pretty cool in the way that they have a blade on each side. So we don't have to move our hands back and forth. We don't have to change it over our body. We can just paddle just like this. We can keep our hands in the same place. So we'll talk a little bit more about the paddles when we get in the water. So let's go ahead and enter our first boat. We're gonna do a team entry on the first one and it's probably the easiest way to get into your boat, okay? All right, Emily, you ready to get in? I'm ready. All right, so we're gonna take Emily's boat down to the water. We're gonna put it in the water and then we're gonna team get into the boat. Emily's going to get into her boat, but I'm going to help her out. I'll show you how that works. All right. Yeah. Now you notice that I'm not in very deep water here. Like I said, this water is shallow. This is a nice beginner spot on a lake to practice kayaking. So to make sure that Emily's boat doesn't slip away from her when she starts to get in it, I'm going to help her out. But we want to get a little bit deeper. For this method, I call it just kind of the sit down, sit down method, but she wants to be at least up to her calves, sometimes even up to her knees, but she's going to very simply, I'm going to hold the boat and she's going to sit down in it. Now, the reason I'm holding it is so when she sits down, it doesn't slip out from under her, right? Now you can do the same thing without a partner, but it's nice if you have a partner to help them get into their boat. Thanks, All Sam. Right. You're very welcome. All right. I'm going to leave Emily while we get our next paddler in the water. Are you ready, Sarah? Yeah. All right. If you'll grab the back of your boat, I'll grab the front. All right. All right. What do you think? Do you want to push? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So another easy way is to put the boat in really shallow, just like this. Have that person sit down. And then we'll go ahead and push them in. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Emily's out there if you need any help. Thank you. You're welcome. One more way that you can get in your boat if you don't have a partner is kind of the way that you step into your boat while holding on to it. The important part about this last entry method is that you want to make sure that you maintain three points of contact. <laughs> Right, pull my boat in. Now, if you wanted to push your boat in, if you needed to keep your feet dry, if you wanted to push your boat in, you could push your boat in, set it parallel to the bank, just like this. Make sure that you bend down, put your legs over the top and sit down just like this so that we make sure that we're holding on to the boat at all times. And then we can kind of push ourselves off with our paddle. All right, we've got everyone in the water now, so we're gonna line up over here. We'll talk a little bit about making sure the paddle is adjusted for you. Whenever you're in the boat, make sure that your legs are really bent. Make sure that they're out a little bit and make sure your paddle isn't too short for you. Make sure you can hit the water with it. And a good way to determine where your hands need to go on your paddle is to put your paddle on top of your head. It sounds kind of silly, but it works great. got it so that's where we're going to keep our hands right here that'll allow us to paddle really easily 
Now there's some different parts of the paddle as well, the shaft, the middle portion, and then things called the blades. Now we want to make sure that the bent inside of the blade is facing us. So you can see how that blade bends. We're going to make that face us so that when we stick it down in the water and do a stroke, it gives us more power. Now we're going to go into actually doing the different paddling strokes. So if we want to come over here and kind of line up next to each other, we'll back up just a little bit. All right. So the first stroke that we're going to do is really simple and it's called the forward stroke. Now, when you do a stroke, you want to stay inside something called the paddler's box. So that's kind of right here. So we don't want to lean too far out to either side. We want to stay pretty much in the middle. This is where we're going to paddle from. When we stick the blade of the paddle in the water, we want to make sure we bury the whole blade in the water. We push back towards us, stick out and pull back towards us like this. So that's our forward stroke. I'm gonna do a couple back strokes just so we can see forward again. Stick the paddle in the water, bury the whole blade and pull forward. And do it with the other side. Both sides the same way, just like this. All right, Ethereum, give it a try. There you go. You see how she's burying the whole blade? Good job. Now you might think, well, that's great, but I can only go straight. I can't turn. So if you want to turn with a forward stroke, you just need to paddle more on one side than you do on another. Paddle to the left, I start turning. You can see me turning towards Carly now. Back up a little bit here. If you paddle just to one side, you can start to turn the kayak. You can see the nose of the kayak moving back and forth. This is how we can go left and right. Another important stroke, this is one now you've shown me how to go forward and turn right and left, but what about stopping? And there's a really easy stroke that can help us stop. It's called the backward stroke. So once you have forward momentum, if we want to stop, we just do the opposite. We stick it behind us and push forward. Stick it behind us and push forward. Now, not only will we stop, but we'll start to go backward. All right, Ethereum, so you're all the way at the bank. Let's see if you can do some backwards strokes and back yourself up. Great job. Really good. So really, that's very, very simply how you paddle your kayak. Really, really easy. And once you get inside a kayak for the first time, you start to paddle it. And you notice when you paddle on the left, you start to go right. And when you paddle on the right, you start to go left. And it's a very intuitive thing to do. So really, really easy to learn how to paddle the kayak. Just remember, stay inside your paddler's box. Don't lean too far to one side. Make sure you bury the blade. Put the kayak in for a forward and backward stroke. Make sure you put the blade in close to you, just like this not really far out, you want it nice and close, and you'll be paddling in no time. Now there's a few other strokes, in fact, two more that we'll learn today that'll make it really easy to do a few special things in your kayak if you want to. And Emily's gonna take over and show us two more strokes that can be really helpful when you're in the kayak. All right, guys. So we're gonna start out by learning the sweep stroke. And when Sam had mentioned earlier about paddling on one side multiple times and get a continuation, that's gonna turn your boat. This sweep stroke, if I give myself some space here, is gonna allow for us to reach out. And Sam mentioned your paddler's box. We wanna make sure we're not leaning too far with this one, but we really wanna reach. So reaching out, and we're gonna go from our toes all the way past our hip to the back of the boat, that's your stern. 
So reaching out and reach real far, and it's creating a large horseshoe. Think about sweeping dirt under the rug if you don't want to get that dust pan out. So you're going to reach and go all the way back, and you can see how it's going to allow my boat to turn much faster. So I'm going to come back out here, give myself plenty of room, and demonstrate that sweep. Stop by going forward, going in the opposite direction, just like what Sam was talking about. Take my hands, I'm going to sweep all the way out and reach. Not leave, we're going to reach. And it's going to turn me in a real big circle. Now, if I add an extra backward stroke, it's going to allow my boat to pivot. Here, you want to try the pivot stroke? All right, let's give ourselves plenty of room. Yeah, either direction. So reach real far and make that big horseshoe circle. The further you out, the further out you reach, the more you'll go in a circle and the less you'll go forward. That's the great thing about the sweep stroke. And instead of reading, you just reach way out, you can sweep one way, and then you can sweep the other. You sweep one way. So we're making a real side. big reach all the way out here. And your forward stroke, you want to keep a streamline against your boat. And that's going to help your bow your boat stay very straight. If you reach out further, it's going to allow for your boat to move that direction. Hi. <laughs> You're doing great. You're getting it figured out. So let's go on and move to our next and our last stroke. And this is going to be called the draw stroke. If you're trying to get up close to a boat ramp, say maybe you left your water bottle on the ramp and you want to get up there and grab it, or if you're going down a river and you need to keep your boat moving in a straight direction, but slide to the side, we're going to use what's called a draw stroke. And this draw stroke is going to be out, and again, we're reaching, but we want to keep our center of gravity towards the middle of our boat. So we're reaching out, and we're going to pull towards us, and we're going to turn so that we pull that paddle out from underneath our boat. We don't get it caught up underneath it because you're going to have a lot of momentum going on when you move this. As Sam mentioned, you have the blade of your paddle. That blade, you want to face towards your boat. So you can see how instead of a forward stroke where I'm perpendicular with my boat, I'm going to put it parallel to the side. That's going to allow me to get the most water and movement and momentum as I'm trying to move that boat sideways. So I'll demonstrate again, and then we'll have a Thera and Sam try. We're going to pull with our bottom hand, and we're going to push with our top hand so we don't have one arm getting really tired and the other arm getting a little bit less workout. Turn it just ever so slightly like you're cutting through butter with a spoon. Can I give it a try? Sure. All right, so you go up nice and high. You don't lean, we reach. Stick the whole blade and then pull it out. Stick it and pull it towards you and then pull it out. The more you do this towards the middle of your boat, the more you'll go straight to the side. Just scooting over with what's called the draw stroke. Which makes a lot of sense because you're sticking your the blade of your paddle out, you're drawing it to you. You're drawing it in, pulling it back out. Like Emily said, this is a great one if you need to land in shore, if you need to pull into a boat ramp, if you need to scoot over to the side of a river, that's a really great one to do. So those are a few of the strokes that you can do, really simple, as a beginner kayaker, and you'll be all over the water in no time. You'll be able to, to go all over a lake just like this. But today, we don't have much wind, we've been able to paddle no problem, and we're in the shallow water. That's where we feel comfortable starting out for a basic kayaker. And so we hope that you'll come join us sometime for a Runge kayaking program, because we do them all the time, all over the central region, and probably near you as well. So seek out those places where you can rent a boat, where you could come to a free kayaking program. All of those different things are things that we hope that you'll do to get out on the water when it's a nice day, maybe a little bit warmer than today. So we hope that you have a good time. Always wear your life jacket, always be safe, and we'll see you out on the water soon. Sam, we do have one question from one of our viewers. Um, they are curious as to what is the best style kayak 
um, for a beginner to start this with? This is a question that we get all the time. And the answer is, is that you have to figure it out for yourself. Go to a place where they'll let you try the kayak before you buy it. That's the most important thing. You want to go somewhere where you can sit down in a boat, ideally where you can even get it on the water and test it out. Because if you sit on a boat on land, it's going to feel a lot different once you get into the water. My best suggestion is go to a place where you can test out a kayak, find out how it feels for you, how it's going to work for you. And that way you find the best boat for what you want to do. There are all different kinds of kayaks. The ones that we have here are called sit on tops. Now, sit on tops, some of them can float really high and be a little unstable. The sit on tops that we have float very low. They're very, and they're very stable. They're very difficult to turn over. So these boats are really great ones to use. So I really like a sit on top. It's what I feel comfortable in. I can get in and out of it really easy. I feel that it's stable and comfortable for me to paddle in. I feel safe in this boat. And so you have to figure out what feels right for you. There are also sit-in kayaks and there are tandem kayaks that two people can be in. There's all different kinds. So my best suggestion is go to a place where they know about the boats, make sure that you ask someone who knows about the boats and make sure that you can test them out. All okay, right. Thank you guys so much. Go warm up. <laughs> Take care guys. You too, Brandon, thanks.